This is Microsoft Bookings, and I'm gonna use it to book myself a virtual interview at a time that's convenient for me as a candidate, but also compatible with the schedules of each of the interviewers who need to be present. And if your company uses Microsoft 365, setting this up costs you zero dollars. Let's dive into how to set it up. Interview scheduling can be really tough to do efficiently. There are lots of challenges to overcome, like not having visibility of your candidate's availability, needing to find compatible slots on the schedules of lots of internal stakeholders, and being in a race to get it all done before the potential talent moves on to another opportunity. Often, you end up with no alternative than holding huge blocks of time on your internal team's schedules, but also being less flexible than you might be for the ideal candidate. Add to this the complexity of virtual engagement, where your candidates might be used to using different tools than you use internally, leading to the potential of technology challenges. So let's take a look at how you can work with Microsoft Bookings and the Teams Virtual Appointments app to turn this complexity into something really simple. Make interview scheduling easy for every candidate, efficient for your interviewers, and a dream for your HR teams. We're gonna start at the Microsoft 365 portal at office.com. So from here, we can go ahead and open Bookings. And once Bookings is open, let's create ourselves a new Bookings calendar. And I can go ahead and add the staff that will be involved in this interview process. So now that we've got our booking calendar set up, we're just gonna change a couple of things here. The first one is we're gonna come into our booking page and under booking page access control, we're going to disable direct search engine indexing of the booking page, which means that no one will be able to search for this booking page. They will have to have the actual address to get to it to be able to book an appointment on. And we can go ahead and we can customize this in any way that we'd want to. In my staff that I just added, I do have some things that I can customize as well. Um, as it stands, when someone is added as a team member, they are able to see what's going on in the booking calendar. But there could be situations where you want the HR team to be managing this booking calendar and you don't want your staff to be able to get in there and see what's going on. So you could do that very easily. We can come down and change this team member to a guest instead. So we can assign a guest to a service but they're not going to be able to get into the bookings calendar and see everything that's going on. Additionally, we want to make sure that the events on the office calendar affect availability. And what that means is that the person will only be available if they're free on their office calendar. Now, that does mean that each of your users who are involved in this need to keep their Outlook calendar up to date in order for this to work. Um, so if you're in an environment where your users don't keep their Outlook calendar up to date, that probably creates lots of problems for your interview scheduling anyway. But for this to work, you need those Outlook calendars to be up to date, where if they have a block of time open, they are really open and available to do an interview if you needed them to do it. So the next thing we can do is jump into our services and we can add a new service. We can set the duration as we need it. And we can also add buffer time. And this will make sure that your staff who are involved have time booked before and after the interview. So if, for example, you want to make sure they don't have anything that's kind of booking right up until the interview starts, you can set a 15 or 30 minute buffer time there and it'll make sure that they've got free time in their schedule before the interview actually starts. So let's go ahead and add 10 minutes there and then we're going to come down and we're going to look at our availability options and generally when you have interviews going on there is a time span during which you want those interviews to occur whether it be over a one week period two week period over the course of a month you don't want someone to be able to book interviews forever so you can limit this in this scheduling policy you can change the minimum lead time you can change the maximum lead time, so we could change that to say 30 days if we wanted to. But we can also change this to not bookable and then set up a different booking availability. So say we only wanted to be able to book this from 3.3 through to 3.17. We can say bookable where staff is free and generally this item will not be bookable, but it will be bookable within this range. 
So that allows us to neatly assign that over the first two week period, we're gonna do round one interviews. Over the second two week period, we're gonna do round two interviews. You can get that all set up in here. You do have flexibility around it if you need to. You can go in and manually set something up, but it limits what someone can do um, themselves from a self-service perspective. So if you get someone who you've offered an interview to and they ignore you for a few weeks, they can't come back later on and set up that interview and expect to be able to be interviewed for that job. Um, that availability isn't gonna be there any longer. Then we're gonna jump into assign staff. And for this to work, if we have multiple staff that need to be in a particular interview, what we're gonna do is set this up as multiple staff. We're not gonna allow customers to see the names of the staff unless you want them to. And then we're gonna take the staff that we want in the interview and we're going to save them into this service. So let's go ahead and save that. So what this means is that at any time that someone's trying to book, it's going to look at the availability of both of the people or multiple people. If you've got three, four, five people that need to be in an interview, it's gonna look at the availability of all of them on their Outlook calendar, and it's gonna make sure that they all have availability together in order to deliver on that interview that you're booking. So this is a really neat way of you are making sure that this is compatible with your candidate schedule, but you're also making sure it's compatible with the schedule of each of your internal stakeholders that needs to be in that interview. If this video adds value for you, please do click the like button. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this on digital transformation for small businesses, Microsoft 365 and the Microsoft Power Platform, then please do subscribe to the channel. So once you've got that all set up, you can actually manage this really easily from the virtual appointments app over in Teams. You can't right now set all of these settings that we've just set from the virtual appointments app, but you can manage the bookings that are coming in and manage your calendar and see what's going on there. And if you're a Teams user, this is a really easy way of managing this. So let's jump over there. So in the virtual appointments app, you can see that we're in our interview demo calendar. We've got our three staff in here, and you're able to see the bookings calendar and what is coming up. If you do have Teams Premium, you don't need Teams Premium for this, but if you do have Teams Premium, then you'll also be able to see what has been scheduled in your queue here. Um, now that is a Teams Premium feature. It might be useful for the, if you're managing a lot of appointments for interviews with these tools, then you may find it useful for that person who's managing that process to have a Teams Premium license as that queue is gonna give you a really neat way of seeing what's upcoming and what interviews you're managing across your organization. But if you're not a Teams user or you don't want to use the Virtual Appointments app, you can do everything that we've been looking at from the bookings interface. And there are certain settings that we set up for this that you can't actually do in Virtual Appointments. So you've got to set it up in bookings anyway. So you can either send your candidates the link to the booking calendar, or better still, you can come into each of your services and you could copy the link to the actual service booking page. Now that doesn't stop that candidate from seeing all of the different options that are available in your bookings calendar. It doesn't protect that, but it does take them directly to the service or the interview that you want them to book. So make sure you don't put anything confidential in the names of the services, the names of people, anything like that. You don't want that in those service names because it is possible for anyone who uses the calendar to see that, but you can direct them to the right service if you want to do that. So I've just taken my web browser to the link for that service and I'm gonna go ahead and book it. You can see already that I've only got two weeks of availability here and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to book on the 9th at 1.30 p.m. And you can see immediately that if you are using the virtual appointments app and you do have Teams Premium that you can see on your queue for Thursday the 9th that we've got this interview in there. You can also see it on your bookings calendar for the 9th and you don't need Teams Premium to see this. Or from the bookings interface you can see exactly the same. So let's create a different scenario where on Friday the 10th um, Adele is not going to be available. So here I am in Adele's calendar, and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to add uh, PTR. And I'm gonna make sure that this is set as busy. 
and that blocks out Adele's calendar for that entire day. So now loading up a new session of my booking window in an in private browser, you can see that I don't have the 10th available because Adele is not available. Bookings is checking that both Pravdeep and Adele are available. So you can see I don't have the times that I booked out in on the 9th and I don't have the 10th available at all because we just blocked out Adele at that time. So even though Pradit is available and he could do the interview, because it requires both staff to be available at the same time, bookings will not allow you to book that slot. Now, if you remember when we set up our service, we made sure that this option of send an anonymous meeting link was turned on. And what this does is it uses a virtual appointment setting to make it really easy for your candidate to connect to the interview. They can do so without worrying about Teams. It's not going to open the Teams that's on their computer. Even if they're doing it from their work computer, it's not going to connect with their work account. It connects them through a streamlined web-based access uh, that's been launched alongside Teams Premium. So your internal users can all connect as they normally would using their Teams client. And you don't need to worry about what technology the candidate is going to use to connect, whether they click on the link on their computer, on their phone, on their tablet, it's just gonna open a web browser, it's gonna open that session there and then. Now you don't need a Teams Premium license to use this, it's a feature that's been rolled into all of Teams, all of bookings, all of virtual appointments. But if you do have that Teams Premium license, you'll also be able to enjoy additional beneficial features such as SMS reminders, lobby branding, lobby chat, and other parts of the add-on license. So check out this video here to learn more about what you can do with virtual appointments in Teams Premium. It's features like these that can transform tedious time sucks into streamlined and efficient value ads, and every Microsoft 365 license is full of them. For support or advice in digitally transforming your organization, including by maximizing the value of your Microsoft 365 investment, get in touch and drop any questions or ideas for future tips in the comments below. Until next time, bye-bye.